So today we're gonna talk about a little TikTok I saw, and it's from a plus size creator talking about her experience with posting her weight loss journey online. Girl, a mess, y'all. Hi, guys. Welcome to my channel if you're new, and welcome back if you've been around here a while. I'm Kendra. This is Kind Kendra Creates. This is my space where I talk about my life, um, and I talk about other stuff too. <laughs> so if that stuff sounds good to you, then make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Also, go ahead and like this video while you are at it, and. I saw this TikTok and I was like, ooh, I got to talk about this. And it just so happens that I caught her live like a day or two ago or whatever. Um, she was on live on TikTok. And so the thing is, TikTok is so smart. It like knows your history. So it recommends things that pops up on your For You page. And so her live popped up on my For You page. And um, on her live, she was actually talking about her journey. I believe, and correct me, um, I can be. I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but I believe she's on Wegovy and she's larged, uh, she's lost a large amount of weight so that she can prepare for weight loss surgery because she's getting weight loss surgery. So she was just kind of talking about that and she had another um, creator on her live as well and she, she had previously had weight loss surgery so they were just chit chatting back and forth and talking about a lot of different things and it was just so real and so raw and just mm, chef's kiss. But I'm not talking about that. But what I'm talking about today is a TikTok that she posted a little while ago. And um, I'm just going to cut through all of that, roll the TikTok, and then I'm going to come back with my commentary. I might lose some followers for this, but honestly, I have to get this off my chest. Since I've started posting about my weight loss journey as a form to keep me accountable, I've seen countless videos from people on my FYP as well as my mutuals expressing their strong dislike for when plus size creators start posting weight loss content and start talking about weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. And I just gotta be honest and say as a larger person, like significantly larger than all the other plus size girls, it's super frustrating to see this message come from them, especially because they haven't been fully pushed out. I've been pushed out a long time ago. I'm 27 now, about to be 28. I can't tell you the last time I was able to buy something from a mall. When I see those same girls do fast fashion hauls from places that everybody can shop at, not my experience. And since I've been a content creator that also happens to be plus size, I've always acknowledged that everybody's plus size journey is different. So just because they aren't as big as me, that doesn't take away from their experience. But I just feel like it's really unfair to continue to hear these messages from them. So some of them I've chosen to unfollow. I've spent a lot of years in the reality that the world is not going to get bigger for me. And honestly, I don't expect it to because being this big is not fun. But before you puff all your chest up, remember that not everybody is fighting just to fit in Fashion Nova. Some of us are fighting for our life. I'm Ooh. <laughs> so it was just like, oh my God, let's talk about it. So the first thing she talks about is the first thing she says is I might lose some followers. This is telling. This is telling. So like fat acceptance would like you to believe, oh, we don't care if people are losing weight. We don't care what other people do with their bodies. It doesn't matter to us. But honestly, they really do. Because if you like someone as a creator and you're liking what they're doing and you're following them along and you connect with them and they're so cool and they're, but the minute that they lose weight or the minute that they talk and they speak about you know, their experiences being this big and they don't like it and they want to lose weight or whatever or whatever, you don't resonate with them anymore. You don't like them anymore. You think what they're doing is inherently wrong and it's triggering you and it's setting back the plus community. And with this creator, she's always maintained the idea and the belief that she is a creator. She is a plus size creator, but she is a creator that just happens to be plus size. She does not let her size dictate like her stance and a movement behind her and this is what she's standing on she has totally denounced that belief which i can get behind and i can respect because um she's spoken about how 
damaging like body positivity could be um, when you're talking about health and things like that. And so that's honestly the first thing that stuck out to me. Um, and then the next thing that stuck out to me was her experiences as being larger. So like all my life I've been big, right? So I grew up that way, you know, and went to high school that way, went to college that way, always. But I was what you would consider kind of like a small fat, I guess, for most of that time, which I guess, mm, I don't know if that's considered small fat, but I was like a 16, 18, maybe a 20, or maybe that's not a small fat. I don't know. But I feel like I was on the smaller end. I feel like I could go in stores and like still find something, even though plus size people say they can't go in stores. I feel like maybe they're reducing the plus size section because I don't shop there, so I wouldn't know anymore. But like, I can remember a couple of years ago, you know, being able to, you know, shop around and find things and things, you know, fit me lovely, I believe, or whatever. But when you get to a certain size in which I did eventually get to that size, I could tell like, I couldn't fit things anymore. I can remember going to the plus size section in Forever 21 and everything just not fitting because I was so big and I didn't understand it. And I was like, well, I thought this was supposed to be a 3X. But then I realized like, girl, you don't wear a 3X anymore. <laughs> I think that was the problem really. And, and, I, and I do believe that Forever 21's clothes run a bit small, like on the plus size spectrum. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Um, but I can remember that. And I, and I feel like she, she relayed that message perfectly as for her being a bigger plus size person. And I feel like it's always this war within the body positivity, fat acceptance community about like the different hierarchies and standards of being fat or whatever. I can't understand it because I'm not in that movement, but I can understand the differences between, you know, like a small fat and like a larger um, plus size person. I could see how you could have more difficulty in just maybe what you consider like not necessarily, you know, big things like, you know, going shopping in a store or whatever. But then it also relates to even the fat acceptance community and how you're perceived within it and your hierarchy within it. Because a lot of people will talk about like how small fats really, you know, like, you know, like they're kind of like on the outside looking in, which is so crazy to me. Um, I saw that argument a lot too, um, which is so crazy. I just feel like kind of like they just want to make like anything to argue about or anything to fuss about. And I and I and I really don't get it. <laughs> but then again, it's not for me to get because it's not my community at all. <laughs> In a really telling statement um, that she made with being big is not fun. That is how you summarize it. That's what it is. There you go. There you have it. <laughs> I wish I could insert some clips from her live because like she was really speaking like real and honest and raw and things like that. And one of the things that really stuck out to me, um, just to kind of, I guess you could say contrast this statement along with like some things that I heard on her live was she was talking about all the things that she looked forward to you know, being smaller and losing weight. And just to put it in perspective, I forget what she said her highest, her highest was, but I know for sure she had been well over 400 pounds because I believe she said that she was down to like maybe 380 and I'm totally, I could, I could be totally off, off the rails with this one, but she had to lose weight to like qualify for the, um, weight loss surgery um so she is still pretty large um but yeah she uh was just talking about all the things that she looked forward to when she got a chance to um you know be smaller 
and she talked about and and I believe I don't know if she talked about it or it was just a topic of conversation it was just not having to worry about a lot of stuff like having to worry about fitting in an airplane seat and getting up to go to the bathroom because the bathroom is so tiny or like you know sitting on furniture is this going to break? Is it going to hold me? You know, like just being comfortable and crossing your legs and being able to properly tie your shoes. And these are the things that like normal size people take for granted. They don't think about it. And, um, you know, like no one thinks about that stuff. No one thinks about that stuff. Something as simple as comfortably going to the bathroom and wiping yourself. Because being fat is not fun, you know? It, it's it's really not. And I feel like that is the part that fat acceptance fails to tell people. No, no one should be like harmed or harassed or bullied or discriminated against or denied opportunities for things or any of that. No, because of your size, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But if you choose to remain larger, then you should know what comes with that. And it is definitely a risk for your health. And it is definitely a risk for your mental well-being because you're worried about all of this stuff, right? And it also is a risk to you being able to live comfortably and do the things that you want to do in life because your weight is literally holding you back in some cases. And the last point that I wanted to hit on that she talked about is that she talks about like some people just aren't like fighting to like fit into Fashion Nova. Like they're literally fighting for their lives. And I think this is a great point because I feel like it's always this aesthetic thing that a lot of fat acceptance people talk about like oh they just want to be skinny and they just want to be seen and they just want approval and they just want to fit in and they just want society like personally me like i don't care about all that if that's what you want that's fine too but for a lot of people it's not always all about that it is about fighting for your life and what you want to do for your life and how you want to live your life. Not just a place in society, but just in general, a place in your own life. Like, do you want to go skydiving? Do you want to go horseback riding? Like, do you want to travel comfortably on an airplane and not encroach in other people's personal space? Those are three things I know for a fact that can definitely hinder you as a larger person. And it's not just superficial things like, oh, I want to fit into a smaller size or I want all the hot guys to notice me or, you know, I want to be able to walk into a store and shop off the rack or whatever. A lot of people don't even care about that stuff. They just want to live. They want to live comfortably. They want to do things that they never done before. They want to see the world. They want to experience life. They don't want their weight holding them back anymore. You know, like some people want to have children. I know that sounds so crazy. And sometimes weight affects your fertility. And even if you are able to, you know, get pregnant, congratulations. Carrying a child is a difficult, life-threatening task. And you should be as healthy as you can be and prepared for the toll that that could take on your body. Because if you are fighting to sustain your own health in your own body, now you're going to be fighting to sustain the health and the life of someone else's. And that brings me to the next question or the next topic, shall I say. You have a child and you bring them into the world and then what? You are heavy, you are big. So can you go on amusement park rides with them? Can you be active and run around with them and do sports with them and ride bikes with them? And I know this thing right here, 
may ruffle a little feathers. But do you have to worry about your child being teased now because you've put your bad eating habits onto them? Or maybe they are a, you know, normal sized kid. But could they possibly be teased because they have the fat mom? I grew up fat. I grew up obviously black. <laughs> and I also grew up in a poor rural community in Louisiana, right? You getting where I'm going with this? So I didn't have all the advantages. And now that I'm a parent, I want to give my child all of the advantages. And if that means for it to be very materialistic or shallow or whatever the case may be, yeah, I want my child to fit in. I don't want them teased. I want them to have a very easy life to where they don't have to face as much adversity as I did. Because truly, we know that childhood trauma affects the way that our brains work. And a lot of fat people have had a lot of traumatic experiences. Hence why the fat acceptance community exists because they are trying to lessen a lot of the stigmas around being fat. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, people need to know that there are risks associated with being fat. And it could lead you down a path to where you are literally fighting for your life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really like that creator. I really like her TikTok. I'm going to link her here. Um, she's bigger on TikTok, but she does have a YouTube now. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Make sure you continue to spread kindness and overflow. Hey, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.